You're listening to the Bird Dog Babe podcast with my mom, Courtney Bastion. I think that's why I'm so passionate about this business because it lets me do all these things that I love. You know, I, I love doing events, but I'm, I'm really, really more passionate about training and helping people and solving problems. And so for me, it's actually not even about selling guns at all, even though that's how I'm going to make a living doing it. It's more about really helping them solve the problem because even women, we're, we're just all built different, you know? So some of these guns, they start as a baseline and then we got to switch them up a little bit. And, you know, a lot of them have adjustable combs and triggers and, and all that stuff. But yeah, I, I think my whole entire life, every business that I've been involved in has been a driving force of just helping people. Cause I, I don't know. I think that's where it's at. I'm servant's heart. And I think if you help other people find joy and happiness, then that is the best thing that you can do. Hey, bird dog babes. My name is Courtney Bastion, and I am obsessed with all things bird dogs. And I'm here with you to share the stories, experiences, knowledge, and opinions from the women and a few guys in the industry that are killing it. I'm a Wisconsin girl living in a Montana world. I'm mom and two incredible kiddos, wife and occasional assistant to a pro gun dog trainer, traveling the U.S. talking about canine nutrition while hunting, breeding, and competing with my German wire hair pointers and Bracco Italianos. As someone who started hunting later in life because I wanted to give my dogs the opportunity to do what they were bred to do, I'm here to help inspire, educate, and connect women to get their bird dogs out in the field and experience a bond like no other. So pour yourself a glass of wine and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Bird Dog Babe Podcast. I recently read an article about the top characteristics of successful entrepreneurs. A few of those include, they make it all about the customer, They aren't scared of taking the road less traveled. They're constantly learning. They're not afraid of risks. They adapt to the current needs of the customer and market, and they network, network, network. Today's guest encompasses all of these characteristics and then some. Tracy Keenitz is a female entrepreneur that recently turned her passion into a business when she opened Excel Shooting Sports in Kalispell, Montana. Her demo range and pro shop are first class. And it gives people the opportunity to actually demo a gun, get fit, and receive some tips before deciding to purchase a gun. She is an elite dealer for Cesar Guarini, Fab Arm, and Siren Shotguns, and is able to sell them all over the U.S. And if you don't have the ability to try them out at her facility, she has found a way to still be able to provide her amazing customer service from a distance. She has a true desire to help people feel comfortable and confident when shooting, and I can personally attest to that. Tracy has several upcoming events planned at her facility, so be sure to get over to Excel Shooting Facebook and Instagram pages to find out more details. Also, stay tuned to the end of this episode to find out how you can get a free gun slip, which is a value of $90, in addition to free t-shirts from Tracy and I. All right, let's get after it. Thank you to sponsor Dakota 283, unparalleled protection for traveling to and from your favorite hunting spot. Dakota 283 kennels are a premium quality roto mold with recessed handles on top for convenient and safe tie down and makes it easy to lift up into the truck. I love the secure door frame with high security locks so I know my dogs are safe when I need to stop for fuel. An added bonus is the drain hole in the back which makes cleaning a breeze when your dog has been run hard and put away wet. Head over to Dakota283.com and use promo code BIRDDOGBABE for a 10% discount. Hey, Tracy. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, Courtney. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited to um, have you share your story and give my listeners um, a good idea about who you are and what you do and why you've become one of my very, very good friends. So um, go ahead and start us out with what made you want to start a shooting sports business? 
Oh, well, you know what? It's actually kind of a funny story. Um, so I've been an entrepreneur forever, you know, and I recently sold a business the end of last year. Um, one I had been doing for a really long time, started it, um, ground up kind of a new concept sort of, and I just really had engrossed, you know, my whole life in it. And then I sold it last year and I spent some time just kind of going like, Oh my gosh, what am I going to do next? Cause at first I thought, you know, I'm going to, I think I'm going to retire and, you know, take some time off. And then pretty soon, like after like four days, I'm like, yeah, no, it's not going to work. <laughs> and so I was, I was just like, well, what am I going to do? And, you know, so I was talking to, you know, some friends and fellow entrepreneurs and, and just telling them, I'm like, gosh, I just don't know what to do with myself. And, you know, they were saying the same thing to me that I, that I've said to many women entrepreneurs, myself personally, as I've coached them and worked with them and, and that all these, all of these years is you should, you should really do something that you love because if you do a business that you love, it's just not work and it's fun and you feel a passion and, and all that stuff. But even knowing that I was just like, Oh my gosh, I just, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and I was feeling lost. And so, you know, a um, couple months went by and I think my husband knew that I was lost and, and I think I was starting to get a little bit depressed and he, I think he picked up on that. So one weekend he says, Hey, why don't, why don't you come with me and go to the club this weekend? Let's go trap shooting. And I'm like, Oh, I don't know. You know, and he's like, come on, let's get out of the house. Let's go have some fun. So, um, I did, and I just, I had a blast and it was super fun. And I remembered, you know, many, many, many years ago when my husband and I very first started dating, we would go trap shooting actually with other couples on dates. And it was a ton of fun. Um, and then we moved from Minnesota to Montana. And most of the clubs out here at that time, it, it was predominantly men. They didn't do a lot of couple things at all. In fact, I didn't know any other women that were just shooting trap and, and that whole thing. And so um, we had let it go. So when we started doing um, the shooting again here on, on Sundays, then I was just like really looking forward to it. But then this tiny little bit of myself that's just an itty bitty bit competitive, you know, it's like, dang it, I'm kind of tired of these guys kicking my butt. So um, what do I need to do to get myself to hit those 25 out 25 targets? And, and that, and the weird thing is, is the more that the guys were talking to me, it was actually like, I started doing work. I was going, I was getting worse and I was going backwards. So I did the Google thing and I had found a woman that was in Australia actually. And she did a YouTube video and she was like, Hey ladies, you know, here's the deal. If you want to improve your shot, then it's time that you need to start thinking about gun fit. And she went on to explain that, um, most women struggle with any shooting discipline, whether that's upland hunting, traps, skeet, sporting plays, whatever, um, they struggle because they're really, they're trying to shoot with a man's gun. And that man's gun is what's holding you back from being your best. And she went into all this different information about it. And I was like, huh, that's really interesting. So then I started Googling um, women's shotguns and so I found Siren and I was intrigued and I thought, wow, this is some really good information, but I wasn't 100% sold at that time. So I, I was looking for dealers around and I was trying to find one of these shotguns to go pick it up. I wanted to shoulder it and I wanted to feel it and wanted to see of everything that this Australian lady was saying and what the company was saying on their website was true. And I couldn't find one. I mean, literally, I told my husband, I said, come on, we're going to Washington to try this gun. And I, and I called the guy and he's like, oh, I don't care. You know, I don't have them on me. I'm, I'm an instructor and I can order it for you. And I'm like, well, you know, I don't really just want somebody to order it. I, I want to pick one up. And um, so then I called around and, and 
then I was going, then we were going to drive to Oregon, which was about nine and a half hours away from us. And my husband's like, really? He goes, you better call and make sure they have some. And so I called them and sure enough, they didn't, they didn't have the shotgun that I wanted. And so then I called Texas and then we were going to go to Texas and then they didn't have it either. And I was like, what oh the goodness. heck? Yeah. You know, and so I ended up calling Siren and I said, Hey, I'm trying to find this shotgun and you know, where is it? And so they were trying to find me one and long story short, I finally said, wow, this is crazy that women should have this much problem trying to, trying to find a shotgun. And so I said, so, you know, what's it take to be a dealer? And so they told me, and then I said, well, I'm not going to be a dealer unless you send me some shotguns. And then that was, that was a turning point. Um, I did find somebody that was willing to send me some shotguns. And I, from the moment I opened a box and picked it up, I was like, it was like opening a Christmas present. And I picked it up and I was like, Ooh, Mm -hmm. this was a big deal. And so I had a couple of them laying there and, you know, my husband come in and he wasn't totally on board with me being a dealer at that moment. He's like, really, do you really think you're going to sell that many? And I'm like, I think I would because wow, what a struggle for gals to find a gun. And there's so many women that want to go out and hunt and we want to shoot. And, but here's the deal. We also have this tiny little bit of competitiveness or let's be real, maybe a lot of competitiveness <laughs> in us that, you know, we would, we want to do really well. Um, so I went, you know, I kind of went through this process and I, and I was still shooting then on the weekends with my husband. And I just said, you know what? I love shooting with my husband and our friends love going hunting, um, traps, boarding place, whatever. And then I was thinking about this other part of it. And I have always had a thing inside me about helping women. You know, I own another business that helps women specifically in business. Um, but this one's, this was an opportunity to really provide women with something that's just not readily available out there. And definitely, and all the time I was going through it, rarely, if even available, um, to get a service, you know, to buy a shotgun from another woman. And what I realized is, is it's two very different things, two very different things to buy a shotgun from a man and a shotgun from a woman, because there's very different things that we encounter as challenges as a woman buying a shotgun that men, they, they just don't get. Mm -hmm. Um, So I kind of like had this aha moment of like, oh my gosh, I get this combination of all these things. I can help women get into a gun that they're excited about so they can pursue the shooting discipline that they love. Um, And, you know, since I did open a dealership and I see women coming out and they pick up that gun and they go, oh, and then they shoot it and they go, ah, you know. And they're like, oh my gosh, this thing feels better and it's lighter and it's just super fulfilling. And, you know, I've had women traveling in from all over now and it's just, you know, over and over again. But I think the the thing that ultimately when I decided it was like it pulled together all of these things for me that I was really passionate about. So I'm passionate about my husband and doing something with him in a sport. I'm passionate about helping women you know, I love shooting guns myself. It's, it's awesome. And so, well, yeah, I guess that's why, that's why I started. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I love it. No, and you nailed it. And I think our stories are so similar as well, Tracy. Um, and I can remember the day I bought my very first shotgun and it was, you know, it was a mix of, well, I don't know what to get. So, talked to a couple of women, would you shoot, you know, posted on Facebook page of women that, that, um, also hunt. And I say, what's everybody shooting? And so you get a hundred different replies of feedbacks of, of what it should be and what you need, because, because we don't know, we just know we want to get out in the field with our dog and shoot some birds for them. So I walked into a sporting goods store and, you know, the guy at the counter said, what are you interested in? And um, I said, well, I want to go do up some upland hunting, uh, some waterfowl, turkey, and 
my opportunity there was he pulled a couple of them off the case and said, shoulder it. And, <laughs> you know, um, shouldering it for the first time, not knowing where to go. They don't, you know, the guys behind the counter, they don't give you instructions on what's going to be your fit. They don't measure you. They don't tell you, um, you know, they didn't tell me my head was turned kinked all the way over top of my gun. Um, and it immediately it was, you're going to need to take this amount of inches off of the, the stock to be able to fit you better. So, you, you know, price starts adding up. Anyway, I had it done and then chat with it for probably, what has it been? 10 years. And then I started shooting with a friend here and he was giving me some pointers on how to shoot it. And I was still struggling and it was, it was getting it shouldered properly because it kept hitting my armpit and getting stuck. And even last season, uh, one day when we, after we got done grouse hunting, I had bruises all over my upper arm and my husband said, what's that from? I go, I have no idea. And he's like, is that where you were shooting from yesterday? Are you shooting off of your arm? And I, I embarrassingly, I go, well, guess I, I guess I did. I had no idea I was shooting it from my arm and not from my shoulder. And so I think learning how to shoot properly, um, getting fit for the gun, all those things are so important. And come to find out, I, I was getting better at my shot, but I was still struggling with the shouldering part. And so do I take my gun in and get it altered for a second time? And after talking to some people and doing some searches and learning about it, I came across the siren as well, where it's, the line is, no more compromises. And I'm like, yeah. ah, there's something to that. And so I, just like you, I called siren and I said, I need to talk to somebody. I don't know, um, you know, what, what you guys have to offer, but I, I just, I want to be able to try it out. And that's how I got put in touch with you. And come to find out, you were only two hours from me. Yeah, <laughs> so it's so perfect. I mean, unfortunately, like you, that you're like <laughs> going state to state to state. But um, no, I'm so, so grateful. And I think that, I guess that can bring us right into your facility and how I met you for the first time. And you gave me the ability to demo every single gun there from the siren line and it was during turkey season which was very very hard for me because yeah. off to my left as I'm shooting at your range is what what was it that day like 15 turkeys or something over there yeah I know there was <laughs> and lots you, of them. And there was and I'm just like I got the shakes I, I because as I was sitting out that morning before we left to your house I was out in my blind with no luck and and then off to the right, you have this pond that ducks and geese are flying in and out of. And then up to the right up on uh, your the grass area there, you have a bunch of deer. So, you know, think of like virtual reality hunting while you're trying out a gun. <laughs> it, it was, the, oh, and even before that, as we pulled into your driveway up, uh, rooster pheasant ran across the road. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was gonna... like the clouds opened and ah, oh, like good things are going to happen for you today, Courtney. And, and, and it did. <laughs> I, I know it was... I did for a while there, I didn't know if I was like, okay, you're being distracted. Look over here. Look over here. <laughs> Don't forget about those turkeys. <laughs> I was, I was. And I remember my husband was even laughing that day because the ducks were getting up and and he goes, you're not going to shoot those ducks. They're, they're not going to get in your way. You're just fine. And <laughs> yeah, you know, it was awesome it was... though. It was amazing. Your, your facility is just incredibly gorgeous. I mean, you guys didn't miss a single thing as far as um, accessibility and, and how you have everything set up in the shop, being able to shoot the guns right there. That is so huge. And I wish uh, other people had that opportunity to be able to try them out like that before they commit to just buying one. Um, because you know, there's nothing worse than my experience that when I bought my gun of, okay, you're paying a couple thousand dollars and then you got to add in the amount to get it. Um, the stock cut down and actually, uh, 
the women in the club that I had contact you um, about shooting, they went to that day of shooting themselves somewhere to demo some guns and, and they were told too, yep, you can buy this one. That's a good gun. And you're going to have to get the stock cut down. Um, and I just don't think uh, a lot of us realize that we don't need to have all those different alterations done. They can come fit to us because somebody took the time to figure it out and, and fit them to us. Well, you know, a, a couple of things is um, you've said a couple of things that kind of hit close to home with me. So, you know, you were talking about that bruise kind of under your armpit and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and one of the things that I, I think is sad, but yeah, interesting is that there's a lot of women that are actually fearful of shooting a shotgun because of it hurting, you know, or they get those mm -hmm. bruises and, you know, talking about that, that's one of the things that's super important about the gun fit, but not only just the gun fit, but learning where to find that pocket, you know, so you don't get those bruises. And I think that's one of the things that I love when people come to the demo range is we get to work on that. We're like, okay, let's, this is how you find your pocket. And you know, if that gun is sliding under your armpit, it's straight up, it, it's a bad um, fit for you. And when you're in that pocket and you have the right gun fit, it takes away that recoil, you know? And there's so many gals that come out that was like, oh my God, I didn't even feel that. Or, hey, that didn't really kick that much. Or, hey, that wasn't that bad. Um, you know, and so yeah, what you've experienced there with that bruising, I mean, that is so common to hear that you know, all the time. But um, yeah, I, I love our demo range. You know, I love the fact that we are lucky enough to have a wild kingdom here. You're not the only one that gets distracted by, you know, the animals. Um, we had a little group over last night and kind of the same thing. The deer are just all out there and they're just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're not moving. But, um, you know, there's, there's actually 22 siren demo centers in the United States. Um, only four of them are west of the Mississippi. So one is in Arizona, one in Oregon, the other one's in Alaska. And then now we have the fourth one here in Montana and we're the, we're the largest, um, demo center for siren and sees a greenie and fab arm, which means that we have more demo guns on hand and available than a lot of them out there. So a lot of times when you call the demo centers, what that means is they typically have, you know, a couple guns that you can go demo. Um, sometimes, uh, like Siren in particular, Lynn Green will send a gun over to a demo center so they can try it. But demo centers are a little different. So what you experienced here is not necessarily what you're going to experience at work because sometimes they'll send those demo guns into a demo center and then you have to you know, go somewhere to a club and shoot it instead of like where we have it here, you walk 50 feet out, out the door mm -hmm. and, um, get to shoot one. Um, but yeah, you know, we still have a lot of people come in, um, traveling in. We love it. We're only, we're only about five minutes from the airport and there's a hotel right next door. So, you know, if people, um, can fly in, get over to the hotel, you know, we're just a hop, skip, and a jump away to go pick them up and, and come over. And people do fly in. They do fly in looking for guns because, you know, um, they want to have a quality gun. They want to have that opportunity to pick it up and, and fill it and shoot it. And, you know, I kind of did the same thing. You were talking, Courtney, like you went in the store and they're like, what do you want to do in this and that? And, you know, Troy took me um, to several stores between Montana and Minnesota when we went back in, in January we went to a lot of big box stores with lots of guns in them. We stopped in other ones and, you know, not one of them sat and was like, well, I mean, to be honest, they, they didn't even really work on gun fit. It was kind of like, Troy was like, well, what do you think about that one? Mm -hmm. And I'd pick it up and hold it. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if that was a good fit or not a good fit. And then they're like, well, how about this one? Well, I don't know. I guess right. it feels okay. But that's the thing is a lot of people don't even know what it should feel like. But when you do pick one up that does feel right, then there's a noticeable difference. And, 
and you know that, but yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, that, that made all the difference in, in my choosing as well. Um, because what was it? There were two I was going between the one, the Tempio, um, fit like every time I shot it, it just, it fit right in my, right in my shoulder, right where it needed to be. But I loved the Elos D2 for so many reasons, but, um, it just didn't, it didn't go in my shoulder as well as the Tempio did, but I liked the Elos D2 cause it was lighter than that one. And, uh, then you said, well, you needed to try the Tempio light then because it'll shoulder the same and it'll be lighter in weight. And sure enough, I mean, as soon as that happened, um, you know, I think I'd even told Lynn Green, <laughs> I don't think I've been able to find a bra that can fit me as well as that gun does. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's, it, it's really just incredible. And, um, to have that feeling of, I wish I would have known this, or I wish I would have had this 10 years ago when I started, um, it would have saved so much frustration and, um, my dogs would have been way happier with me and myself because you, it really starts to hurt on your confidence thinking, what am I doing wrong? What is it? And, And when the birds get up and you're in the, you know, in the swing of things, you're not thinking so much that that motion of where the gun goes has to just be a memory thing and um you don't really know what's going on but that day when I came up by you and I was shooting I loved that you took the time to to tell me you know work on this try it this time put your weight here because those are all things I didn't know yeah and and so it not only were you able to give me some shooting tips but um, fit me to the gun, like to an absolute T. Well, and I remember, you know, you going through it, you, you really wanted that D2. It's a beautiful it gun. You I really did. wanted it, but yeah, you were picking up that Tempio and it's, you know, it's just kind of the thing is you can tell when somebody finally picks up the right one because, you know, you, your head is just, you know, the way it should be, you know, sitting on the gun and, and you were just like, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. but I agree. And <laughs> I wish I'd have had mine 10 years ago too, not only just to have, you know, avoid some frustration, but, um, being able to shoot better and, you know, heck saving money instead of how much money is being spent on, um, butchering guns and, you know, kind of, yeah, I've, I've heard a lot of women I ran into, they're like, Oh man, really? I just picked my gun up last week and I just spent $900 on having my, um, stock cut shorter or $2,200 on just trying to have a new custom stock done. And the thing of it is, is, you know, cutting the stock shorter might um, fix the length of pull challenge that a lot of women have because we've got shorter arms, but it doesn't fix the pistol grip. It doesn't fix the fact that we have smaller hands, you know, and if you, don't have a gunsmither who gets the female body and changes the pitch on it. Mm -hmm. You have it. So it's been shortened, but the pitch hasn't been corrected. And then even with an existing stock, then you run into the whole comb issue. You know, women have longer necks, they got higher cheekbones. And so then you're running into it. So they're, they're basically trying to make something work. That's just not going to work. So we're just wasting a bunch of money and a bunch of time. Right. Right. And when we were having the discussion on cost as well, you know, I wanted the, the D2 over the Tempio light for, that was one of the reasons of like, Oh, it's going to be, you know, cheaper, but you and my husband both maybe kind of opened my eyes up to that whole aspect as well is, you know, this is, this is my hobby. This is my jam. This is what I want to do. And, you know, we, we spend money on, uh, you know, nice things like houses and vehicles. And why wouldn't my number one hobby be something that I splurge a little bit on to make sure that I'm comfortable and I'm at my best doing, you know, with that gun. And yeah, 
And so it was just a no brainer after that. And I mean, if my husband's supportive of it and has let me spend a little bit more money, then hey, <laughs> then I'm all good. Because <laughs> that doesn't happen well, often. <laughs> yeah. You know, the thing with this is you really do hit a good point there because it, it, people kind of get a little bit weird about guns and, and prices. Um, and when trying, I've talked about the same thing. It's like, you know what? A good, decent, uh, trip tropical trip is the price of a gun these days you know mm -hmm. and that's yeah. going to be one week versus what you're going to have in a lifetime with a gun but i mean you think about we go buy four-wheelers and we and like you said you know i mean vehicles are necessity but we go buy all these other toys boats and four-wheelers and tents and campers and blah 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 and they all just depreciate and then you pay insurance for them and if you go snowmobiling then you got insurance and you got gas and you got all the gear and and all this stuff. So people will do that if they're passionate about it and it's something that they want to do and um, they have fun doing it. So why wouldn't you just invest in the right gun, especially mm -hmm. a gun who's going to um, make your body feel better? I mean, that, there's gals that I know that, you know, they were shooting the wrong gun and it was hurting her back and they're going to a chiropractic adjustment. And it's like, okay, so how many chiropractic adjustments could you have possibly saved? you know, that would have went towards it. But yeah, I'm glad that, that you got yourself the gun that you loved instead of settling. And I hear a lot of women say too, is like, Oh, I'm just getting started. You know, should I go get something cheaper and see if I like it? Um, or, you know, should I invest in a good gun for myself? And, you know, kind of my immediate response about that is, you know, if you go invest in a gun again, that's, less expensive, but it's not built for you and it's not made for you. The odds of one, you super enjoying that sport the way you can is minimized. And actually, um, your shooting experience as far as, you know, are you going to like enjoy it where you're not going to get beat up by the recoil and are you going to shoot as well as you could? So are you just going to get started, you know, in something that's not going to get you where you want to go? Or are you just going to, you know, invest in the right thing? It's kind of, you know, it's like how many times you'd be like, okay, I'm going to buy something cheaper. And then you're like, dang it, I should have just bought what I wanted in the first place. Now you end up spending way more money. Right. Right. Exactly. And <laughs> from my story as somebody that shot the wrong, wrong gun for 10 years, um, I'm telling you, it's, it's worth, it's worth it. And just having that experience of being able to try the gun out as well. And I think Tracy, that's something that I really appreciate that you do. Um, you know, you're lo you're located in Kalispell, Montana. Um, yay for me. Cause that's only two hours, but you're able to help people from you're all over the U S and when I had a couple weeks ago, someone reach out to me and say that they, um, shot for one of, I think it was the first time or I don't know. I know very novice, um, at shooting, they tried out a couple guns and one of them is a siren gun. And she had mentioned, um, that it was heavy. And then I told, asked her which one it was come to find out it was, a uh, um, which one was it? We, you figured that out. Yeah, it was a uh, siren tempio sporting. Right. Which you would, which you'd shoot for competitive shooting, right? Mm -hmm. So, so for hunting purposes, when we're out in the field all day, days at a time, um, I had, I was explaining to her the one, the Tempio light that I got and said, I'll have Tracy give you a call so she can tell you more about it. I, I don't know the specifics and uh, what you did for her. I, I'm so appreciative for took, taking the time to talk to her. And um, after the shooting clinic next weekend, you're even shipping the gun out for, for them to try out. Yeah. So that's uh, way above and beyond customer service that, that some, you know, I've never heard of before. It's incredible. And I think that just shows your demeanor for someone that truly cares about um, women and their comfortability and um, your customer service. So thank you. Yeah. Well, no, and, and I just 
am happy to help him and you know get him in the good gun so we are going to ship that gun out to him and i'm going to get him on video so there's you know a couple of gals there and so we're going to get on video and i'm going to do my best to gun fit over video um yeah. and see it's not going to be near as good as it could if i could work with him in person but no i mean i i think it's I think it's super important. I had a gal call me out of California last week and she went to a quote unquote demo event in California and she picked up oddly that same gun, the Siren Tempio Sporting. And, and she's like, Oh, I, I like the gun, but you know, now I wish I would have, you know, um, had an adjustable stock on it or, or got something different with an adjustable stock. And, you know, so we talked quite a bit and, and so you know, at that demo event, she had an opportunity to go pick it up and shoulder it now. But there's a difference and kind of like what I would mention a little bit earlier is sometimes we just don't know what it's supposed to fit like or what we should be um, mm -hmm. looking for. And so I kind of talked her through a little bit on, you know, the phone on that. So and she's driving up from California for our event next weekend that we're having for women. But um that's yeah, it's, I think it's super important to, for women to be able to find somebody that can work with them. And, you know, I think there's guys out there that probably get it, but most of them, most of them don't. I mean, they don't get that a women's pocket's going to be a little bit different because, you know, we got slanted shoulders and, you know, we got some extra stuff on the front of us, you know, to take yep. in consideration. <laughs> yeah. Got some, got some boobs in the business. Yeah, we do. We yep. do. They get there. Um, so something I'm really excited about is because I've, I think you and I have been talking quite a bit. I know not only between the shooting clinic and the hunting event that we have coming up, but I just really connect with you and your, your ability to work with people and be so helpful. And I'm really excited to let listeners know that you are now one of the sponsors of the podcast. So thank you. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Is the most, one of the most supportive people I know. And so a really fun perk for our listeners is, so you are a dealer of not only Siren, but also Fab Arm and Cesar Guarini. And so for our listeners, um, if they purchase a gun through you, we are going to be giving them a free gun slip, which yeah. is a $90 value. And if you're one of my Patreon patrons, they're going to also get t-shirts from both of us. Yeah. Yeah. So that's very exciting. And... Yeah. Something else that's really awesome that you're able to do for a limited time is offer buying it with no tax. Yes. Yep. So that's a uh, big, big, big kicker there. <laughs> yes. For a lot of people that is yeah. that huge if they're paying a lot of sales tax. So it, it won't be for that long, but for a while, because I'm um, new for a lot of states, when I go in, I have, they have certain thresholds that until you hit the certain amount of sales in their state, then you don't have to um, go through their sales tax laws and, and stuff like that. So yeah, for the states who are sales tax, um, yep, we can get in there with most all of them and not have to do tax for a while. Won't be so forever, cool. but for a while. Yeah, and that'll save a lot. So, hey, if you're considering getting a Caesar Garini Fab Arm or Siren, give Tracy a call because um, there's a lot of perks there. A lot, a lot of perks. And to be able to support a woman entrepreneur in this kind of a business, I love it, and I'm I'm all I'm all in for it, Tracy. I know you're. <laughs> <laughs> I, we're we're in sync that way that's what i love mm -hmm. about you we're just like-minded but hey you know what um courtney i don't know if i told you this or not but a couple of weeks ago we became um an elite dealer for caesar greeny <clears throat> which there's not a whole lot of the dealers out there that are elite dealers okay and what does that mean 
Well, so that changes things for them if they buy a Caesar Greeny. So, so I'll explain a little bit kind of how the guns go. So Siren um, is a company that was started by Caesar Greeny like six years ago. And then Caesar Greeny bought Fab Arm also like six, seven years ago-ish. And Fab Arm's actually been around since the early 1900s. I, I think it's like 102 years or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. um, but Caesar Greeny has been around since 2002 and they started Siren. And Siren guns are either a Caesar Greeny model gun or a Fab Arm model gun. And so when you're elite dealer, Caesar Greeny guns normally have what they get for a warranty is awesome. It's a, it's three pit stops. And so that means that any Caesar Greeny owner can send their gun in to Caesar Greeny for a pit stop, which means they'll go through it from end to end and they'll fix and replace and tidy up and clean and, and all that. And it includes everything except for the wood itself. Um, but they will just go through and re blue it. I mean, all kinds of stuff. I just had a fella send one in here and he had a whole page of things that they went in and, and tidied up and fixed and new firing pin and, and some things and mm. didn't charge him for that. Um, now woods not counted that because it's a soft um, element and we don't all treat our guns the same and in that whole thing. Right. But as far as the metal and working parts, um, they could do that. So that's awesome. And that's something that's pretty much unheard of in the market. But when you're an elite dealer, anybody that buys a Caesar Greeny from an elite dealer gets lifetime pit stops. Oh, so I didn't they, know that. I know. Isn't that awesome? That is because um, I'm, we have a trucker hunt plan for this fall and I, which I've never done before, but I've watched some YouTube videos and people are like, falling down steep hills doing this yeah. <laughs> and my and you even heard my husband say you're not gonna want to take your brand new gun chucker hunting but guess what now I feel much better that I'm going to be out there with the gun I'm comfortable with falling down hills and know that <laughs> that they're gonna yeah. polish that up for me <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's really good it's really um I mean, because what um, this uh, customer's Dave just sent in, I mean, what he had done on that gun would have cost him a lot of money, a lot mm. of money. So that's super cool. So I'm, I'm really happy to um, provide that. And Troy was really at least like, come on, let's do it. And then, and then of course, um, for Caesar Greenies, then the elite dealers get only like special guns that people can only buy from you know, from elite dealers, like, I don't know, I, I just got a notice for a super cool um, upland hunting dog, gun that has a couple doves on it that's pre-ordered and only people who pre-order those will get those. Now, those aren't siren um, length guns. Um, they've got a 14.75 length of pull, but they're gorgeous. And the only place they're getting those through elite dealers and and they get a chance to pre-order them and that's it. So, um, but I'm super awesome. I'm super excited. So like your gun is a Caesarini, so it falls into that. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. That is very exciting. Let's talk about the shooting clinic that, uh, that you're holding next weekend. Gosh, I think we had just a little bit of advertising on it that we did and it filled up in two weeks already. I and, know. Yeah. Like who does that? Who has an event that's <laughs> pre-sold out two or three weeks before it's even done? I mean, you usually my experience in events is they kind of fill up that last week, the procrastinators and it was full, but yeah. So it's a women's shooting clinic and it's this coming weekend on July 11th and 12th. And we're going to be um, learning all kinds of stuff, but we're going to primarily focus on three disciplines. So we're going to focus on upland hunting, um, trap in sporting plays and we're going to talk about tips and tricks and some general knowledge and a little bit deeper knowledge in each of those but we're going to we're going to kind of go like through this whole gamut of things we're going to focus on ammunition like what's the right one to use what does all that stuff mean on the box you know mm -hmm. how does that affect me 
We're going to um, teach women how to pattern their guns. We're going to teach them about choke tubes and what, it, what does that really mean and what's it really look like. Um, and we're going to dig into all that stuff. We're going to go through like recommended gear. We're going to talk about um, shouldering your gun, finding your pocket. Um, what should your stance look like? How is your stance? You're going to get some coaching on that. We're going to go through gun fit. So Lynn, Lynn Green, you know, she is super, super passionate about helping women get in the right gun. And Lynn Green is the brand manager for Siren. So she's, she's flying in. She's awesome. So people will get to meet her and um, get some of that one-on-one -on -one time with her. And then we got a couple of the top female shooters in the state of Montana that is going to work and coach with the gals on the firing line. So our club has a trap house set up here and that's what we use for demoing. Um, so we're going to put people, you know, on the line and go through some coaching that's going to work with stance. It's going to work with shouldering that gun. It's going to work with our, is your gun in, you know, are you holding your head the right way on it? And how are you leading the bird? And we're going to talk about soft focus and slowing down your target. Um, I mean, there's just going to be, you know, so much awesome information. And then I'm going to go into like all the gifts and oh, drawings. So We've got a bunch of awesome spot sponsors. who has got some super fun, um, you know, gifts that we're going to give away. And it's going to, I'm, 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 I gotta be honest. I'm really kind of blown away that there was such positive feedback, but I mean, gals mm -hmm. are traveling in from all over the place. So and you opened up a second day because it filled up so fast. You Yeah, we did. For Saturday, you even opened up Sunday to take um well how many yeah. do you have how many are scheduled for Saturday? I think we're just we we topped it off at about forty. Okay. And then um then Sunday I was just like, man, I don't know. That's a big event to do two days in a row. So we just went for um, 12 on Sunday. We do have a couple of spots uh, left open there. I don't think they'll, you know, last super long, but I, I have had a um, couple people that's had something come up and had to cancel. So who knows? Mm -hmm. We might have a couple openings and we'll see if they get filled. Um, okay. But and that was, it's 20, it was $25. And tell us what that all included besides, yeah. besides all the stuff that you just went through. <laughs> Yeah. So thankfully to sponsors, we were able to keep a charge at $25 to come in. So that does include um, a box of ammo and their targets. Um, for those that don't have ear protection, we have ear protection. For those that don't have proper um, eye eyewear to go out there, we have some eyewear for them to use. And it'll cover some snacks and refreshments and that so yeah they're walking away awesome. with a ten. Mm -hmm. uh it's serious value i'm i'm super stoked about it yeah um yeah. and then what about in the future again are you thinking about holding this maybe once a year or what are your thoughts gosh you know what i'm i i was originally thinking once a year but based on feedback i don't know we might try to sneak another clinic in this year and I've been talking to a lot of the people that registered and I don't know, I might get down to doing a once a month, um, seminar for, for gals. Um, but shrinking it down quite a bit more. So it's a little bit more one-on-one -on -one where maybe I'll just do groups of 10, you know, and we'll go through that. But yeah, I think definitely we've got some more clinics in our future. Exciting. Very exciting. And I hope you don't mind, but I'd love to take some videos that day when I'm there to share with my Patreon patrons as well, since, um, you know, to give them a little bit of insight of, of what it's like and some of the tips and tricks that you guys are sharing. Yeah, no problem. Cool. And what about, I know you did have some men and husbands interested in coming to this event. We're kind of like, yeah, holding it to women at this point, but are you, would you be doing something like this for a men's clinic as well? Yeah. You know what? We did have about six guys, um, that, that wanted to register and come with their gals. And we said no this time because we just wanted to create a space 
for women to be able to shoot. And I've noticed this, and I've talked to some other instructors, they notice this too, is that some, not all women, but a lot, I would say a majority of gals, when they're shooting and their husband starts talking, they kind of start closing up a little bit, you know, and, and it's a little bit, I don't know, they're just not comfortable. I've, I've had a group of five gals and we were working on guns and all of a sudden the husband's all arrived and it went complete silent and <laughs> it, it ended right there. So we wanted to keep this a safe space for women to be vulnerable and be with other women who are, you know, at their same experience level um, shooting. But I think that we will, based on interest, we will do some men shooting clinics and maybe some mixed even, you know, men and women. I mean, like, I don't know, I don't really care what my husband says. <laughs> I, I kind of tone him, tone him out. I'm like, yeah, you just go shoot your thing and I'll shoot mine and we'll be good. But yeah, I think we will do men and I think we will do a combination. I mean, that's, that's one thing about the, the um, location we have here. We'll, we're going to do all kinds of events. I mean, we've got some people want to do some wedding parties. We've got some bachelor parties and some brides parties. And we've got like Pheasants Forever wants to host their annual banquet here and and that's so yeah. And um we're planning another event for Saturday, August fifteenth, where um we're gonna have due to time and limited space, we're gonna have openings for 13 braces so 26 shooters for an opportunity that women will be able to shoot over broke dogs so the navda um montana's big sky navda chapter and montana's sharpdale navda chapter members from both will be bringing their dogs in for women to be able to hunt over a dog if they've never done that before or just have that experience where even if we have hunted over our own dogs before to just be out there more focusing on the shooting aspect of it rather than uh, where your dog is as well and not having to focus on what the dog's doing and just shooting over them. And um, I think we're going to have a, the other option for women that want to just come maybe midday try out some demo um, siren models and then join us that night for dinner and wine. So the, the kind of layout of the day is after they're done shooting in the field, um, they're going to take their game that they got over to the bird cleaning station, which the Flathead Pheasants Forever chapter members um, are going to be helping man that station and the women will be learning how to clean birds and prep them for dinner. And then we're hoping to have a chef come in. So we're still looking because the one that we thought we'd be able to get is already booked for that weekend. Um, so we'll have a chef preparing the meal and showing us some recipes to do on our own. And then We'll be having wine and talk about the possibility of starting a women's um, Pheasants Forever Women on the Wing chapter of Montana. So yeah, I'm pretty excited be, about that one. Yeah, me too. That's going to be a great event. Yeah. Um, and a nice thing too, I mean, because there is going to be some downtime if, if you're in the first couple braces of the day, um, There's you'll be able to try out the different siren models you can bring your own gun learn how to pattern it kind of some of the similar stuff that will be going on at the shooting clinic will be offered but maybe not as extent to that extent or that detail but um, there'll be definitely some things to do and dogs of different breeds from the navda organization will be there so yeah it'll be fun but i think um once we open that up, I have a feeling that's going to fill up fast too. So um, it's not open yet. <laughs> we yeah. still need to get some details, but with bird costs being around $15 per bird, it is going to be a pretty expensive event to put on. So um, hopefully we get some sponsors to help offset those costs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I think it's, I think it's going to fill up fast too, based on, the ladies I've been talking to and 
and stuff. I think that event will, will fill up pretty fast and yeah. And it's a great opportunity for people to sponsor the event. I mean, this, this, um, one that we have coming up this weekend, there was several, you know, sponsors that just want to, um, network with some people and network with some other women and like-minded individuals and, you know, networking is always like the most best way to market. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Cause you get people believing in what you're doing, but yeah, it will be a great, great event sponsor. You yeah. Come and be part of. Absolutely. And I'm just excited to meet other women in Montana or the area that love hunting and shooting and own bird dogs. So, I mean, that always makes for good conversation and good times regardless. Yeah. Well, you know, that's one thing since I started this dealership that I've really noticed, and I, I guess I never really realized that was out there, is women who are like us and that we're, we're kind of our own little tribe, you know, we're a different, we're a different breed, you know, ourselves, mm-hmm. but um, I, I love all the women that are meeting because I'm definitely finding that, you know what, they're, they're a lot more like me and um I think it's just going to be super fun. I, I'm excited to be other gals that are like this too. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, anything else you wanted to touch on before we close up, Tracy? Well, you know, one thing I just, I thought maybe that our listeners would find interesting is um, there's a, there was something that really was a big reason that helped me decide to become a siren dealer of all of it, you know? And I thought maybe our listeners would find this a little bit interesting how Siren came about. Um, Because one of the reasons why I picked to become a dealer for Caesar Greeny, Fabron, and Siren all is because, you know, we all have different core values in life that matters to us. And one of those core values for me is about quality. So I don't need to have the most expensive thing in the world. I just want a quality thing. So I'm not one that necessarily go by his name brand, just to have name brand. I, I want to have a quality thing. And so I like that about these companies, you know, and another core value they have is about innovation. And then a third one is um, I like unique things. So I think the fact that we're women shooters and hunters and, and we like to do that, that puts us in that unique category. Um, but there was about this innovation when I heard this story, I was, I was like sold hook, line and sinker. And Wes is one of the owners of, of Siren and Caesar Greeny and uh, Fabarm, but in the other um, partners is out of Italy. So these guns are all made in Italy, which again, makes them unique. They're beautiful. They um, have beautiful engravings in them yeah. and that whole thing. But when I heard the story that Wes you know, he's been shooting shotguns forever and he met his new wife and she wanted to shoot with him. So he was butchering this gun up, trying to make the stock shorter for her. And he just, he couldn't get it, you know, to work. And he's been, you know, in the gunsmithing and the guns, you know, forever. Um, and so he, Siren is actually his brainchild. And so he came up with like, you know what, this is it. We're scrapping everything. They pulled in, you know, some of these amazing gunsmithers. They pulled in all these women shooters and like Lynn Green goes in all the time as a woman shooter when they're talking about guns. And so before they roll anything out, you know, they, they come up with these little models, you know, and then they go try them and see how they work. But they actually pulled in all these pro shooter women and, and that's not only in competitive sports, but in hunting and stuff too, and pulled in his wife and they really took it down and said, what do we need to do to make these guns work for women? And so their innovation of how they went through and and did that and decided on the pistol grip and the different pitch and, and all that um, is where that came from and how that's really cool. But I, I thought it was really cool that there was actually, you know, Wes stood up and for his wife said, honey, I really want you to enjoy the shooting experience with me. And mm-hmm. he, so he was on a, a really big mission to create a shotgun for wife. And so 
you know, that I've seen some different little knockoff versions like coming around where they, they think they're getting it. They don't, they don't quite get it yet. Um, they're super expensive. You know, Craig Offs are coming out with a women version now, which they're trying to, you know, model after um, Siren and what's happening here. But I think that, you know, I like that this company thinks out of the box in addition to quality and being unique and beautiful guns. And so I'm super excited to see what models are going to come out with for 2021. Mm. But I, I think that that story was really cool. It wasn't just about it somebody is. going, hey, let's start a woman's shotgun. It actually was, yeah. you know, a guy on a mission for his wife so she could enjoy, you know, the sports and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It kind of struck, it struck a nerve with me, but I think it's, you know, it's kind of how my husband functions too. And how you're, you know, how William was with you is like, let's get you in the right guns. So you're happy. And right. So, yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. That's a really cool story. I, I had no idea about that. Well, tell us where we can find you website, Facebook, Instagram, you're, cause you're all over it. It's a, yeah. Yes, we have um, a new website just getting launched. It is up and running. It's still getting some tweaks on some things, but it's been officially launched. Um, it's got like over 100 pages on it, so we got some things to tidy, but that's um, www.excelshooting.com. And it's Excel with an X C E L, so we don't have an E on there. So it's X C E L shooting.com. Okay. And then that's the same thing for. Facebook and Instagram. And you love talking to people on the phone as well. And I think that that's um, how you're able to be so helpful. So I, I'd really um, urge my listeners to, to give you a call Tracy, because um, you, you have, you have a very, very helpful way about you. <laughs> you're a problem solver. That's what you are. You, oh, can, yeah. you can figure things out pretty, pretty quickly as far as what's going on. And I mean, I know when I started shooting, um, you were able to pick up on a lot of what I was doing wrong pretty quickly. Well, I mean, I love it. Um, I love training. I do love problem solving. You know, I think I've always had decent critical thinking skills, but I, I think that's why I'm so passionate about this business because it, lets me do all these things that I love. You know, I, I love doing events, but I'm, I'm really, really more passionate about training and helping people and solving problems. And so for me, it's actually not even about selling guns at all, even though that's how I'm going to make a living doing it. It's more about really helping them solve the problem because even women we're, we're just all built different you know so some of these guns they start as a baseline and then we gotta switch them up a little bit and you know a lot of them have adjustable combs and triggers and and all that stuff but yeah I, I think my whole entire life every business that I've been involved in has been a driving force of just helping people because I I don't know I think that's where it's at I have servant's heart and I think if you help other people find joy and happiness then that is the best thing that you can do. You're amazing. Thank you. You're amazing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you just, you remind me so much of my mom. Um, just somebody that wants people to be happy and do good and succeed. And um, just a really driven, successful businesswoman because you have your heart in the right place. And I really respect that. So anyhow, Thank you, Tracy. Thank you so much for sharing your wealth of information with us and everything you have to offer. And I'm really excited to see how the shooting clinic goes and in our hunting event as well. Well, thank you. Well, and I think I really appreciate the opportunity and I look forward to seeing you next weekend. And I think what you're doing out here with all the bird dog babes is awesome. You know, I've, I've heard um, some people and I'm talking, they're like, Hey, we've heard about that bird dog babe and um, everybody that knows you just knows that it's a pleasure to know you. I think um, you're just awesome. And I think what you're doing here with the podcast is amazing. I've been listening to your podcast myself and just lots of good stuff. Thank you. I, all right. You and I could talk forever and ever. So <laughs> I know it. 
<laughs> thanks, Tracy. All right. Thanks a lot, Courtney. I'm so stoked about having Excel Shooting Sports on board as one of the new sponsors of this podcast. Someone that truly wants to inspire, encourage, and help people in the shooting and hunting industries is in complete alignment with the goals and efforts of this podcast. To take advantage of the free gun slip with purchase of gun, head over to my website, thebirddogbabe.com, to fill out the contact form. If you're a Patreon patron, you not only get the gun slip, but you will also get a Bird Dog Babe and Excel Shooting Sports t-shirt. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Bird Dog Babe podcast. If you enjoyed this episode and learned something from the content, please share it with your friends. Please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast on whichever platform you're listening from. Check out the show notes for links to references from this episode, as well as info on how to connect through Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. If you're loving this podcast and want to support the production and content, please consider becoming one of my Patreon patrons. Being a patron connects us more on a personal level where I'm able to help answer questions and give advice. My husband William and I have bred, owned, and trained AKC Master Hunters, Field Champions, NAVDA VCs, and AKC Show Champions. We're excited to not only share what we've learned, but also listen from previous and future episode guests for additional content. Go to patreon.com backslash the bird dog babe and five dollars per month and you're in and as always two percent goes to conservation until next week bird dog babes keep them versatile